how to avoid agents cherry picking tickets in your customer service system. Do your agents cherry pick tickets? Do they only select the ones that are easier to solve? Do they leave the more difficult tasks to their team members? Well, if that's the case, then this video is for you. Hi, my name is Dominic. I'm a customer experience expert and enthusiast. I have been a Zenas consultant for the past 10 years now. I'm in my 10th year, actually. I have gathered some best practices that I come here and I share with you and I hopefully give you value with these. In the decade of experience of working as a Zendesk consultant, I have gathered a number of best practices that I've noticed that successful companies do. So I'm taking those best practices and I'm bringing them here, shooting this video, and I hope it gives you value. So how do you avoid agents cherry picking tickets? Well, I have compiled a list of eight things that you can try out. So let's go. Okay, number one on our list is create a routing matrix to automatically assign tickets. If you've been on this channel for a while, you'll know that this is an art in itself. I have created a number of videos covering this topic. So in essence, what you have to do, if we boil it down, you have to define your departments or your groups. You have to define your channels and you have to define if you have tier support, tier one, tier two, tier three, etc. So these are all questions that you have to ask yourself uh, in order to see if you understand your business. The routing itself has to start off from how your business is structured. So how is your business structured? Is it structured based on services? Is it structured based on products or on skills or on different tiers? These are all questions that you need to ask yourself before you dive into how to do routing in Zendesk or any customer service tool for that matter. These are all universal. Now, routing has to ideally be made automatic, but it all depends on the channels that you use, for example. If you use email, that's a mess and you have to rely on uh, language detection. You have to rely on AIs to detect the intent or uh, the actual issue itself. You also can create manual rules to identify keywords that you can create routing with. If you use, for example, forms, yeah, that's much easier because you can detect what your customers are, are uh, choosing in their dropdowns or choosing in the fields uh, where describing their issue, which is much easier. With chat, it's much easier because you can guide the user through some flows and direct them to exactly what they want to fix. So in this case, you, you already know what they want and you can just assign them to the correct department. Now you can use functionality in Zendesk, for example, you can use the flow builder to create these flows to direct the user to exactly which whichever department they need help with. If you use the API, then in this case, you know what the request is about and you will be able to categorize it accordingly or route it for that matter. For phone or talk, you can use IDRs or you can use also AIs to be able to route specific calls to whoever needs to handle these requests. You can direct them by language uh, or by the type of request the user has. Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, Twitter, etc. So all social media usually has to have a person dedicated to handling these channels. And about routing, you also have skill based routing based on the skills that the agents have, or you can have tier one, tier two, tier three. So tier one is whoever is handling the more basic type of uh, requests and uh, is not necessarily high in skill level. And then uh, tier two is somebody who, with a little bit more product experience that can handle more difficult requests. Well, tier three usually is management or compliance is somebody that uh, is handling requests with the sensitive customers that are maybe pissed so on and so forth so these all can get uh, priorities and they can be addressed in the perfect manner number two use the play feature now if you can see my screen i have it open on my unsolved tickets in my group and if i use the play feature what this is essentially about it's going to open the tickets in whichever order that they are in my view and uh, based on priority or however i want to deal with these and after i deal with them i can just go to you know submit it as solved or whatever and it automatically takes me to my second one and third and so on. So it takes me through this list of tickets based on the priority that I have assigned or however I have chosen to categorize my tickets. The reason why you'd want to use the play feature is because this encourages your agents to not necessarily cherry pick and it encourages your users to take tickets in a random fashion and assign them to either themselves or somebody else. And this will increase their productivity and will distribute tickets in a much more democratic fashion. Use the omni-channel routing feature in Zadisk. Now, if you 
didn't know, there's this new feature from Xanas, which is called Omnichannel Routing. It's actually new. It, it appeared maybe two months ago. So this is actually working very well. You can find it in Admin Center, go to Objects and Rules, and then you go to Omnichannel Routing. So you go to the uh, routing configuration and you start uh, defining your routing rules. Now, this is going to take everything based on the agent's availability and what channels they're being assigned to. So this is very powerful and it relies on capacity rules and uh, agent statuses and this routing configuration that you have to do. So this is what you do for essentially after you've defined how your business is structured, you come here and you uh, add your configuration here. Now you want to use this feature because you want to increase agent productivity and you can save company money. So yeah, hop on it. Use the Round Robin app in the marketplace. If you can see my screen, the Round Robin, this is a third party app that is present on the Zendesk Marketplace. And um, you also have a free version, but you also have a paid version. So this one, this app is very useful because uh, as the name suggests, it has a Round Robin type of approach that uh, assigns tickets randomly to users so they avoid cherry picking. You can also use what I've described in my previous step about omnichannel routing. But uh, yeah, if you're more comfortable with this and you use a Round Robin, then this could definitely take you very far. Number five, have a manager assign tickets. So in an ideal scenario, 100% of the tickets that come into the system get assigned automatically. We're not there yet and we might never get there actually. Why? Because we are humans and we evolve. Technology is yeah, catching up fast, but still we're not there yet and we won't be able to detect everything 100% of the time correctly. That's why we need to have a human presence that is going to help the robots. That's going to help the machines. So you can set up routing rules by yourself, can detect keywords, you can train bots, but there's still going to be tickets that are going to be written maybe incorrectly, not in the perfect language, let's say, or not in however you thought the user would try to interact. So people are unique and uh, sometimes not everything can be captured. And that's actually great. The Zenda system, as with anything, for example, is a continuous evolving platform and having a human presence assign tickets is also a best practice. So the goal is not to have 100% efficiency. I know that's the ideal, but uh, before we get there, the best marriage and the best practice is to have a person that actually sits there and their job is to keep an eye out on the tickets that come into the system that have not been assigned so they can do the assigning for them. This is normal. This is best practice. This is what successful companies do. Number six, check agent productivity in reports and see who has the lowest handling time and confront them about it. Now, this one is leading towards a bit of HR, which we don't do, which I don't do, but it's a common sense one. So you would look into agents productivity and see who's not doing very well. Now, confronting them about it, maybe it sounds harsh, but I'm not meaning it in a, I don't know, in a negative fashion. Uh, much rather talking to somebody, hey, uh, do you maybe need more training? Maybe you didn't understand the values. Maybe we need to give you a bit of more time off. We need to give you an incentive. You have to also keep in mind that uh, happy agents deliver better results. So are your agents happy? Maybe they're not. Maybe they're having some issues. So you need to have a conversation. So it might seem uncomfortable, but you know, just talking to people and seeing why they don't do well will take you a long way. Number seven, give an incentive for whoever has the best results and the best performance, meaning whoever has the best customer satisfaction, who has the best uh, handling time, who has the most number of tickets solved, etc. Now, I understand that depending on the industry, not all companies are able to offer these kinds of incentives, and that makes sense. However, there might be a combination of uh, product activity and uh, revenue that comes into the company that you can maybe assign to the customer service team as well. The customer service team is the gatekeeper of your product, your business. So they have direct link to what the customers want and what the customers need. So if your customers are unhappy, then there's a problem with customer service. Now, your customer service team is the one that can make a customer be more relaxed, 
they can help them resolve their case they can help them find whatever they need which will make this customer stay with you you don't want customers churning right you want customers staying with you so if you give an incentive to your customer service team then maybe you can give an incentive to your business to last longer and actually perform better number eight have a better hiring model you might not be hiring the right people and that's not necessarily the people's fault that might be actually your fault you're not defining your values of the company very well you're not defining the processes very well or you're just not having enough documentation for your customers so if nobody knows exactly what to do and how to handle some customer requests then you're essentially maybe not hiring the right people and uh, you know a mess is about to be created so a better approach to hiring would be to first step back define the company values very well define the services products that you sell very well and document those until you can't document anymore and then think about the skills you need to be hiring on this is a bit of an insider that i've noticed but if big corporations were a little bit more honest with what they needed to hire and why they're hiring the people that they're hiring and then they're firing they would have to admit that they have no idea what they're hiring for so they essentially don't know what they're doing don't be that company i believe you <laughs> okay this has been the video for today i hope this brought you value i hope this brings you value i of course know that you have your list and uh, maybe your thoughts on it confront me on it on, in the comment section i would love to hear your thoughts subscribe to this youtube channel i would love to see you in the next one and that's it i'm out bye